I marts 2016 var jeg med Lis Gilager i Ramallah på den besatte Vestbred. Vi skulle møde en advokat, der arbejder for en privat organisation, der støtter og fører tilsyn med palæstinensiske politiske fanger i israelske fængsler. Organisationen yder gratis retshjælp og rådgivning, og så vidt det er muligt afslører de den tortur og de mange andre krænkelser, fangerne bliver udsat for. Sahara Francis er leder af organisationen, der hedder Adamea. Det betyder samvittighed på arabisk. On the situation in the uh, occupied territories since October, actually, the situation was deteriorating seriously. Uh, it was very clear that the Israeli occupation forces has uh, a plan to uh, escalate things and, and to use more violence and more uh, uh, life emotion in even and to kill, to target in order to kill. And this is what was happening all these months. Uh, uh, all the cases that they were uh, shooting people, they were shooting them in order to kill them, at, like claiming that these people were involved in stepping or endangering uh, others not true at all most of the cases we have information that these people even if they were involved really in uh, attempt to stab but in the moment when they were shooted they were not threatening seriously mm. to justify the life if the police or the soldiers or the settlers to any way that justifies the shooting that uh, 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 the soldiers or the police were doing and uh, most of the cases the shootings are in the upper uh, part of the uh, bodies which also indicates that they were not using the same uh, uh, known regulations everywhere that first you have to shoot someone in the leg in order to paralyze him and if you don't can, uh, uh, succeed to control him then you use more force but in these cases they directly yeah used much force that is not needed. So this is why we claim that mostly there were uh, cases of extrajudicial killings with real intention to kill people in order to terrify others and of course to justify other policies like expanding settlements and confiscating lands and displacing. Also in these months the level of uh, detention increased a lot like thousands more than 3,000 people were arrested in uh, these months the children yeah. like uh, they specifically targeted young people uh, and children as young as 12 in some cases they even detained children less than 12 like 8 9 6 or uh, uh, 10 and they kept them for several hours in order to terrify them and release them and to collect to collect information we know that they use the children because they can easily uh, uh, like take information from young kids yeah, man manipulate them exactly the way, and, yeah. and terrify them yeah. like imagine yes. a child 10 years old 11 yeah. years old he's alone in an interrogation center and they questionnaire him about the neighborhood about his mm -hmm. classmate about who's the uh, 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 activists in the neighborhood that they are inciting or could asking people to go out for uh, in, um, uh, um, demonstrations Um, so the total number now of uh, child detainees is around 450. This is a huge number. Uh, Are they in, in now? In, uh, inside, in, 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 and there's hundreds other that they were arrested, kept for several days and released without any charge. And even if they are not arrested for more than one week, I think one week still is very uh, effective on the level of the life, uh, mm -hmm. the way how this child would deal with this experience in the future, because the torture and the ill-treatment that they face is is horrible, in, in even in a short period. And But the first, they don't torture the children? They do torture they, the they children, do. and the famous case is the case of Ahmed Munasra, the boy that we show, uh, the, we got his video in the interrogation session where the interrogator was shouting on him, terrifying him, and the child started to hit his head 
stop it, stop it. He was shouting and he was seriously like, this is psychological torture. Yeah. And I think this is just was a short piece of what's going on in the interrogation sessions. Because also children would be tied in painful positions, yeah. Yeah. Yes. would be threatened to be raped or uh, sexually harassed. They would be isolated yeah, and banned so exactly, so and yeah. and banned on uh, lawyers' visits. Of course, there's no family visits in the time of interrogation. Sorry, visits? No, no, family visits. Uh, visits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I mean, the children would face the same uh, uh, police, the same violations actually that the adults face in these mm -hmm. in this system of imprisonment and detention. Uh, also, the women uh, prisoners, the number increased a lot in the last months, and now there's more than 55 female prisoners, including child female prisoners as young as 12 years old, the girl that was arrested last week. Also, the cases where they arrested people from the hospitals. They raided hospitals and they kidnapped the patients that they were injured in clashes, like in Hebron, for example. They killed the cousin in order to uh, uh, they, uh, to kidnap the, uh, the, the guy that they claimed that he's wanted, that he was hospitalized with very serious uh, uh, health uh, uh, conditions. And, uh, of course, they raided also the hospital in Nablus uh, uh, area. So they, there's no limits for uh, uh, their uh, behave and, and uh, at all there's no respect for international yeah. law and international... And the conventions that they have signed themselves. Exactly, so exactly. So okay. torture is continuing and increasing. Uh, administrative detention policy, for example, increased a lot in the last couple of months because it's easier for them to arrest people to claim that they are dangerous and to send them for detention uh, based on secret information without any charges, without any real procedures, and then to renew this detention order for indefinite times. There's more than 600 administrative detainees currently, and of course the hunger striker Muhammad al qiq who yeah. stopped his hunger strike last Friday after four, 94 days of hunger strike against the policy of administrative detention. Because the, the, the fact that this detention is indefinite, actually this is a torture, this is psychological yeah. torture when you arrest someone and he's not aware when he would be released. Yeah. Exactly. And what, what happened to him? What was the conditions why he, he stopped? Uh, the it, they agreed that he would be released on the 21st of May. Okay. And uh, he and would stay in the hospital. Him, uh, of course, yeah. uh, he would be now kept in the hospital in order to be uh, treated. Mm -hmm. And they agreed to allow his wife and his uh, uh, two kids to visit him because they were also banned. All these three months of hunger strike, his wife was banned from visiting him for security reasons. This is the most like uh, uh, irreasonable justification in these circumstances, like the guy was dying, yeah. he's very weak, he's very under a real threat on his life, and they still didn't allow his wife to visit him, yeah. where they can control the visit 100%. Yeah. So what should the uh, um, security reasons, so, so what do they mean? What you know, the word, it's what enough to mention for security yeah, reasons, yeah, yeah. So then any judge, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I, I know the phrase, uh, but I mean, what could happen? They would claim that uh, uh, maybe she would be inciting, maybe she would be passing messages from yeah. him to, other, to the yeah. other political mm -hmm. activists or so on. So they have, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and fortunately the high court, even the high court in Israel, when they saw the word security and secret files, that's it. They would take the excuse of the security group and they would confirm the decisions of the security mm -hmm. uh, uh, bodies without further deep discussion about the legal uh, um, issues, the humanitarian consequences, and the responsibility of the state uh, as occupiers according to the international yeah. law. To Unfortunately, the, anything yeah. under security would justify 
uh, any uh, policy of the state for the legal uh, uh, level for including the Israeli High Court. Hundreds we saw of this photo on uh, uh, Arafat Square. Yeah. The photo of this guy. Uh, also, I followed his case on Sami Dun. You know. Yeah. 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 I and followed it the case till, uh, It I, was a very. I was happy to see. I even wrote a message. Yeah. I'm so happy to see that. that the you know, since 2012, was... there are several uh, administrative detainees that they went in a hunger strike. In 2012, even in 2014, even we had a general hunger strike of the administrative detainees against the policy of administrative mm -hmm. detention. Unfortunately, Israel is using administrative detention as a systematic way of uh, uh, control against the whole society. Because, as I said, this is arrest without any real uh, reason, uh, reason or, or they don't need to submit any evidences to the courts. So it's very easy to arrest hundreds of people under administrative detention and keep them for a long time under these uh, uh, claims of yeah. security threats without any legal, proper legal procedures. So it's very easy to arrest children, adults, uh, females, political leaders, social activists, or whomever. They can arrest anyone under administrative detention. And actually in this year they used it against children in Jerusalem for the first time. Like, they used to arrest adults in Jerusalem under administrative detention, but never. It was very rare to arrest children under administrative detention, less than 18. What a child would be, like, such a threat to the security that it can justify having him for six months under administrative detention. Also leaving people to die in the streets, not giving them any... The issue of yeah. exactly yeah. shooting them and then yeah. leaving Just them leaving without them. any access for medical treatment. It happened several times mm -hmm. as well, and sometimes it was documented by uh, uh, filming uh, yeah. whether individuals or the cameras on the streets in different neighborhoods in Jerusalem. No, that's true. So, uh, um, I think they are interested in keeping this tension because this is justifies their policies f for their own public opinion, I mean, mm. definitely not for the international community, but at least internally, this is how they can justify as well expanding settlements and continuing actually with their project of the separation and the control of the, and actually annexation, uh, I would yeah, say, annexation. for the uh, uh, rest of the occupied territories. And of course, in the cases yeah, of children that they would be tortured, we are trying to submit complaints, but unfortunately, in the local level, like I mean the investigation, but in the Israeli system is not so effective because they try to hide the fact that they are torturing and ill-treating uh, uh, detainees, so they don't do proper investigation in these cases, but it's very important for all the organizations, mm -hmm. including Donir, to document the factual things in order to use these documentations, whether in uh, advocacy, whether in issuing reports, or in the international level. Mm -hmm. like complaints to the UN uh, bodies on torture yeah. or in the future maybe if we can really bring these cases of torture to the ICC, to the International Criminal Court. Mm -hmm. But of course they, do, they try not to show any traces of, of uh, course. torture. They try to do it the, in a psychological way like you exactly said. Exactly. The, the, the practice shows that since late 90s actually they're more using psychological torture than physical torture mm -hmm. and they already developed lots of ways even to torture physically but without leaving marks on the body for example the typical way of torture is tying someone in very painful position but the tie like they would tie you to the chair or to the table or any uh, the frog uh, uh, position but after like leaving the, uh, uh, the handcuffs or the legs uh, shackles, there's no marks on the body that you can prove no. that it was. And, and when, you, when they tie you, for example, in a banana position, 
like to the chair, yeah. a chair without a back, yeah. and then your legs from this side, your hand from this side. After three hours of being tied, it's a very painful uh, tying position. But when they left you, there is no marks to prove that you were tortured in this. Like at least on the, I mean, later we can prove when the person is released and we do some medical checks, we can prove how the shackles were used in because marks on the bones yeah. but i mean not marks that we can see in the eye that we can immediately deal with no. in the court sessions to claim that this person was really very severely yeah. tortured and i don't believe that while he's in detention we would be able to do these medical checks because the system will never agree to do these proper medical checks in order to prove torture. No. They don't want to find uh, uh, the a way how to investigate torture in a proper way and to, to, to put an end for the policy of torture. Mm -hmm. Actually, the whole system is based on the torture yeah, and, and the also denying medical help, for instance, exactly. if somebody is injured, that's another yeah. torture as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very often in the prison system, like the health treatment of all these thousands of prisoners are very poor. Mm. It's very problematic. Lots of prisoners end up developing very serious diseases because they were not treated properly in correct time. In correct time, yeah. like I mean someone that started to complain about a symptom and he wasn't treated for two years or three years mm -hmm. and then they will discover that he reached a very serious stage where mm. it's irreversible. They cannot mm. do anything in order to save his life. Mm. People developed cancer or, or they got heart attack. Diabetes or as well. Diabetes yeah, that is a very yeah. slow, exactly. Yeah. And, and chronic uh, uh, diseases like uh, rheumatism or other uh, 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 kidney failures in some cases. We also heard about women being in very cold cells. Exactly. This time of year. Uh, uh, they discussed that uh, human rights march. Uh, that you the, 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 the transfer from the prison to the court, uh, uh, um, the two court, the two military courts in the occupied territories is a very humiliating, degrading process. The bus that they transfer them in is, is very cold in the winter, very uh, um, heated in the uh, in the summer when they reach here the cells of the court it's very cold because there's no heat no uh, nothing inside the cell and they can wait for like 10 hours 12 hours the whole day uh, uh, because they enforce them to wait for all the prisoners to finish their day in the in order to take them back and distribute them to the prisons. It's very, really very bad conditions for females especially because they claim that when they bring them from the prisons to Romley detention facility where they bring all the prisoners in order to take them to the court, there's no proper facilities for uh, uh, female prisoners so they keep them in the car, locked in the bus of the transfer without a toilet, without a... a, a, a like human uh, conditions and this is really and like on on the top of all this the strip search that they can do for them in some uh, cases claiming that they are trying to hide or transfer illegal things in this journey and so on so they use every opportunity every single opportunity in order to put more pressure and to put uh, uh, um, and ill treat these uh, detainees and prison. It's I think more obvious than ever with the wall now more constructed in all of the different areas you can see it's more visible yeah. all these uh, measures related to the construction of the wall like the bypass roads, the bridges, the tunnels, the separation, the control over the Palestinian communities in different areas is more obvious. Where? In the whole region, I mean touring around okay. in the occupied territories, yeah. it's different than five years ago. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the wall is more completed and yeah. it's yeah. more present and yeah. and, and this it's is what we mean exactly. Yeah. 
this is why we say that the Israelis are continuing in their annexation because it's more clear now it's with the wall yeah, yeah, being yeah. completed that what they were planning from the beginning that most of the areas on this side of the wall at the end of the day they would be annexed to Israel including the big settlements yeah so that's their plan to, to take it all yeah so yeah. what we, if, if you can say what do you think will happen do you think they will succeed if this silence of the international community yeah. keeps going on yeah what will stop them no what will stop them nothing and they have united usa on their side Exactly, unfortunately, yeah. and, and Europe is so worried, like Europe is so Weak. silent, and I think they, they, they are not uh, interested anymore in, 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 in the Palestinian issue. They are now worried about the refugees, yeah, the internal, yeah, yeah, the Syrian, yeah. so what's going on in the region is really affecting the Palestinian cause in a very yes. serious way. But I mean, if, if there's no peace going to happen, it's, it will affect the whole region. The Palestinian issue will always be a very central case for the whole Middle East. Yeah. So it should be clear that you cannot think about a solution in Syria without thinking about a solution no, in no, Palestine. Of course. Of course. But uh, don't you think uh, all this, what should we call it, mess in the whole Middle East, is is uh, is doing that you you don't focus on Palestine of course so and that's especially on purpose. the especially the refugees question yeah so they made that yeah I I think so yeah I think so yes. definitely yeah and All we you know we Denmark went to war for less much less we we went to war in in Iraq in Afghanistan uh, in Libya and Syria for less than yeah. what's Just happening the here of, of terror, you know, yeah. after the, the threat of terror yeah. Yeah, of and, course. And that's the key. Yeah. That's the key uh, issue that the Israelis are trying to push more and more, and it's so accepted now in Europe. This fear of yeah. the terror, the Islamophobia. Yeah. This is how they can use also security, and and this is how they do their business. And they created it. They created ISIS. They. You know that. Of course, I yeah. think it's in their interest in order to keep this business of security, facilities, uh, personnel, trainings, and, and teaching the world how to deal with terror. We're fighting terror in Palestine, so come and learn from our experience how you are supposed to, yeah. to fight terror in Europe or in Africa or in Latin America or wherever. So I think, yes, of course, it's in their interest Mm. to keep this discussion about terrorism and, and fighting terrorism and yes. security needs and... Uh, yeah, and extra but they, uh, money for weapons, police. I mean, they, they and policing and weapon industry and so yeah. on. But they created it in, in Libya, in Syria, everywhere. I mean, they created ISIS. They, they support it's them. the same as the US were supporting bin Laden in the 80s in Afghanistan in order to face the Russian... Uh, yeah, regime, yes, yes, and yes, they yes, ended yes. up claiming that uh, Al Qaeda is a terrorist. Exactly. Did who you see the video Al Qaeda? I gave you? Who allowed them? Have you seen the the, the, the video I gave you? You remember I gave you this one, that one? Uh, uh, yeah, not Did yet. You, you, but it's about 9/11. You know, it's all about 9/11. Yeah. So, but but they created it, of course, to start all this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was so it's that the same. Was, that was the starting point. Uh, 9/11. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah, and so they can uh, continue exactly. Yeah. I think this is the plan to keep all these uh, um, and the discussion about ethnicities and and ethnical groups. This is very uh, helpful for the uh, Jewish state uh, uh, model that the Israelis are trying to push. Why now protecting the minorities, the ethnic groups in Syria that they should have their own, like, you know, this is the, the idea of dividing the whole Middle East for yeah. ethnical groups 
and states in order to justify the existence of Israel as a Jewish state here in the middle of the oh, Middle yeah. East. Yes. Oh yes, I see. But do you think we'll succeed in, 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 in enlightening the world? In I think so. We have, I we have, have and we, but we are in a, in a hell of a hurry. I know it's a very difficult time and it's really sometimes we feel so desperate and, and so uh, um, depressed from all what's going on. But oh, I yes. think there's no way that justice will not come Don't up. You? Like, yeah, and, and, and uh, we will reach it one day. It's a pity that it will take more time and why we have to pay such a high price every time these people lose their life, people would be imprisoned, and, and it's really a very high price that the Palestinian people is continuing mm. to pay, where we, I think everyone in the world believes that at the end of the day, you cannot ignore the rights of the people, no. like, and, and you have to admit their basic rights and their in, in, according to the international law as well and the self-determination of the people. So, why you don't push for it to happen now? Why we have to wait five years or ten years or God knows how, how long we, we have to wait more? Because, you know, because, uh, I mean, the, uh, all, the, one of the main uh, reasons is the media are controlled completely con controlled. Not just the media, I think it's there's much more about also interests and political interests. Yeah. Because uh, uh, the, the Europeans, for example, yeah. they don't need the media, the officials, because no. they are fully aware about what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Their missions here, yeah. the, the consulates that they are present here, they report back mm -hmm. every, every week about what's going on. So on the level of knowing and being aware about what's going on on the ground, the Europeans are the most updated people yeah. mm. about, I mean, the official, uh, uh, if not the people, mm. uh, on the uh, grassroots level. So if they are really willing mm. to put an end for mm. all this mm. occupation, mm. they can do. Mm. They can do. Mm. They can pressure Israel mm. to really end their occupation and to be respecting human uh. rights. Not and international law. Yes. But they are not aware. So much money involved. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and it's not hitting them, you know, why you would think that now they are interested in Syria. Just because the refugees reached Europe and it's <laughs> it's it's facing them yeah. now directly How on yeah. the face. Couldn't they really figure that out before? <laughs> that if you bomb a country, people will leave it. But I mean like the Palestinian cause, how it affects Europe. Yeah. No, they don't care. You can deal with it like, I mean, they are for the last 48 years living with this occupation perfectly. Mm. Though they know that according to their responsibilities and their international law, this is illegal situation and they are... So I think our duty is, is really to face them that they are be complicit with this. Yes, and 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 to push them that if you want to claim that you are a real democracy yeah. and you are, and you are really respecting international mm. law, what about your responsibility mm. under these uh, rules versus the Palestinian cause mm. and your complicity with the Israeli mm. occupation? And to press everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Goes also for Tibet, for instance. But uh, you know, it's a question of money and. Uh, Uh, mm. Trade deals with China, and this and diplomacy that is up, not yeah. endless. Like they yeah. believe in dialogue. For God's sake, dialogue for more than 40 years. Mm. 